dad was a hawkish Republican, but my mom was you know, an anti-war protester. And, um, and we had a, the poster, war is bad for children. Yeah, we had that. And you know, there's a moral purity to that that is, it's easy to disparage and dismiss as childish or naive, but it's, it's true. You know, and I, I actually try, I think we need to use, you know, the, the, the idea of using the legal arguments. Yeah, do everything that you can. Um, but I think what it comes down to for me, and I, I you know, I've, I've struggled to find the right uh, way to express this idea, but getting people to view war, and not just a war, not just the war in Iraq, the war in Afghanistan, the war in Vietnam, uh, but war, period, with revulsion. I think everybody, I think, you know, we have a lot of disagreements here in this room, but I think everybody shares that. Where did that come from? How, how did it persist in us when obviously in most people, it does, you know, either fades away or they never had it to begin with? How do you arouse it? Um, and this is kind of a marketing PR issue, actually. You know, you're trying to sell the idea of peace to people, and I try to use anything I can. Um, but it really does come down to, some, at some point, be willing to say something like, um, you know, there is no way to peace. Peace is the way, and war is bad for children and, and uh, so on. In terms of priorities, I, I really agree with Dave. I think David and I are in agreement that that if you are a social activist, you can accomplish so much by focusing on war and militarism, and then a lot of other social goods can flow from that. Uh, there, is, there is one um, partial uh, exception I would have to that. I think especially if you're looking at sort of um, violence in, in the third world, insurgencies, and, and uh, uh, you know, the kind of really intractable uh, Violence associated with some very poor regions around the world. Um, there's another, there's a leverage point that has to do with something very simple that I think can have an enormous cascade of positive effects, and that's educating young girls, uh, educating girls, and empowering them, and including uh, giving them uh, power over their own bodies. In other words, giving them access to birth control. And um, you know, not only is this something that is morally right. Uh, in itself, it it triggers, and there, there's been a lot, big scientific literature on this, it triggers a whole wave of positive social effects, suppresses the, uh, the birth rate, very high uh, birth rates are associated with overpopulation, and you know, in spite of what I said about resource scarcity uh, before, it's just not a good thing to have uh, a population growing uh, too rapidly, especially in very um, poor regions. You get more uh, women going into the workforce, more women going into uh, politics. Just lots of good things happen that make societies healthier with something that's just so simple, just getting girls into school and, um, and also giving them access to birth control. All right.